All right, everybody. Welcome to the April 3rd meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. My name is Brian Adams. I'm the chair. And tonight, we get to listen to all of you out there, folks who are weighing in on any one or more of the nine different projects that we have facing us that have applied for funding for this round, uh, this round of funding. Um, before we begin, we always start our meetings off with general public comment. This does not have to do with specific projects that we have before us, one of those nine projects, but if folks have comments or would wish to comment on anything having to do with the CPC other than these nine projects, now is the time to, um, to speak up. For those of you unfamiliar with Zoom uh, or with these kinds of meetings, the way to speak up is You'll notice at the sort of bottom of your screen, there's a little way to have a reaction, and raise your hand that makes it easiest for us to know and then put you in the front of the queue. If you're on the phone, pressing nine on the phone will get you to Sarah and she can, uh, she can put you on as well. So once again, is there anyone wishing to have a general comment on CPC related stuff that is not one part of these nine proposals? Okay, not seeing anybody's hands. We'll move on to usually approval of minutes. We have none, so that's an easy one. Uh, we'll move on to public chairs. Comment. Wait a minute. Uh, there is a public comment. Okay. Uh, can I do a public comment on Memorial Hall? Uh, Memorial Hall is one of the projects that we will be talking about in just a minute. So if you can hold okay. off on that. Um, everything okay. is a public comment. Everything is a public comment tonight, um, but we're trying to get comments on things not having to do with the projects. That's how we start. So okay. hold off on, on your comment yep. for just a little bit. Um, chair's report, just a couple quick things. One is thank you, Chris Hellman, for facilitating uh, two weeks ago. Um, I was able to listen to the meeting after and interesting discussions. Um, for those of you that got it, and I think Sarah sent it around, uh, Broadbrook Coalition sent out their annual report uh, for their work, and we funded so much of the property and so much of the invasive work at, at uh, Broadbrook uh, and at Fitzgerald Lake. And it was really interesting to take a look at another amazing year um, that Broadbrook has done and really helping along with the city and along with the Conservation Commission manage that really precious a conservation area. But what is it, 960 acres? Kevin, is that sound about right? Yeah. So it was really, really nice, nice to see that. Um, Sarah and I got a very brief email from Stuart, Stuart Saginaw. Is that how you say his name, Sarah? Um, he is the chair of the statewide community preservation coalition. He's had some medical concerns and medical issues. Um, but as I guess back in the game now and has offered to perhaps Zoom with us. Um, and remember, we were interested in hearing what the coalition is doing and what it can uh, do for us. Um, so I think Sarah and I are gonna attempt to come up with a date at the very end of our round where we can um, hear, give him 20 or 25 minutes to, to Zoom in and, and speak to what the coalition does and address perhaps some of our some of our concerns, if that's okay with everybody. I think we had agreed uh, to that. So we'll try to make time uh, time for him. Um, so without further ado, we're gonna move to the public. Oh yeah, Jeff. Thanks, Brian. Um, there was also an email circulating from Stuart about a webinar I think in June 18th, it was supposed to be a refresher course for anybody who wanted, um, I think, an up, update on CPA, CPA and CPC <clears throat> um, rules and regs in general. Oh, thanks for passing it on, Jeff. And that's, that's... going to be a Zoom. I mean, I got that like yesterday or today. Good. <clears throat> Thank you for reminding us of that. Sarah, you sent that around to everybody or did Stuart send that around to all of us? 
Uh, that came directly from the coalition. Uh, they should have all your email ad addresses to send uh, their newsletter to. Right. But if but, anybody, uh, I can send it out if anybody didn't get it and is interested. Yeah, if you could resend that out, that might be useful. Thank okay. you, Jeff, for reminding us of that. Okay, so um, again, folks uh, tuning in to this meeting, this is where we get to hear from you, the general public, uh, on your thoughts, your um, concerns, your reactions to any of the nine projects uh, before us. Um, and again, to do that, we'll look for raising hands. Uh, we're not gonna go project by project. We're just gonna go person by person. Before we do that, one other thing. Um, I'd ask Sarah to give us and you folks tuning in a uh, a brief finance a brief uh, picture of what our financial situation is for this round, so that you know um, we love all the projects that come before us. Uh, we cannot always fund all of them uh, because of the limited resources that that we may have. So, Sarah, can you take us through a very quick financial overlook? Sure, absolutely. So. Um... After funding just over 1.4 million in projects in the, the first funding round of fiscal year 24, there's now about 775,000 remaining uh, in this year's CPA financial budget through the end of FY24, which is June 30th. Uh, we will be able to make additional recommendations in the, in the fall uh, once the tax rate is set, but until then, that, that's the amount that we're dealing with. Um, and this round alone, we have just over 3.6 million in CPA requests. So the, the, uh, definitely some definitely a challenging round and some difficult decisions to be made. So let me repeat that for those of you just tuning in. We have about seven hundred, about three quarters of a million dollars available to us this round, and 3.6 million dollars in requests coming in. So. Um, Again, there are some difficult choices that have to be made. It should be noted that uh, the large, the largest request, a little over, I believe, two point seven million, is the Memorial Hall restoration. We have in our, um, we have the ability to uh, to bond that project, which means we could uh, recommend to City Council. That this, that that uh, that we borrow 2.7 million or bond that 2.7 million. Um, it's really the only project. There's perhaps the playground, but Sarah will will guide us through that in a little bit. Um, that is bondable. So even if we were to totally bond that project, we would still not have the amount of money necessary to fund all of the other projects. So again, I want to repeat that just so that folks know out there that it may be a worthy project, it may be a wonderful project, project deserving of public support, um, but uh, we don't have the money for everything. Um, also, we'd like folks out there to know that we've had a chance to read proposals that have come into us. We've had a chance to hear presentations from, uh, from the nine different uh, um, sites. Um, we will not be making recommendations for funding tonight. If you're interested in attending that meeting, we encourage you to do so. And that will be two weeks from tonight where we'll deliberate. Um, we also want you to know that we are not the funding body. We are the recommending body. We recommend funding for projects. It goes to city council and city council is the one that makes those decisions. City council is um, really good and recognizing that we've done our due diligence, we put a lot of hard work into this, and they generally go with what our suggestions, recommendations are. But again, we are the recommending body. City Council is the funding body. So without further ado, with nine different projects out there, if folks can start raising their hands, making themselves known for people who wanna to speak to individual projects. Uh, so head on down to that reaction section at the bottom of your screen, at least on the bottom of my screen, raise your hand and we will move forward. Can we talk on a phone? Uh, you may, yes. Right so, now or? Sure, why don't you begin? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, <clears throat> my name is Tom Pease. I live at 130 Spring Street in Florence and currently I am the 
commander at the BFW Post 806. I am also commander of the DAV Chapter 92 and the president of the Northampton Veterans Council. So I've got my finger on the pulse of a lot of veterans. And speaking on their behalf, we certainly want to see Memorial Hall restored and rehabilitated and whatever it takes because the building has such a strong history of serving the veterans in our community going way, way back, along before my time. Um, not only does it serve a history uh, that many families are associated with, we have an office there, a service officer, who takes care of many of my our veterans, uh, local and uh, well throughout the surrounding communities where they come in looking for help with housing or funding or disability or whatever. And speaking on behalf of all the veterans, I certainly don't want to see it not rehabilitated and not not brought back to its you know proper state. Um, so again, on behalf of all the veterans, um, we certainly want to seek whatever funds it, it takes to get the building back to where it should be. Okay. Great, thank you so much. Uh, is it Tom? Is that was it, is that your Tom? Name? Yeah, Tom Pease. Yep. And just for folks to to do what Tom did, which is just state your name, please, and your address. We certainly entertain um, uh, feedback from folks outside of Northampton. But if you could just state your name, yep. address, that would be great. Uh, Janet, thank you. Janet Nelson. I'm a uh, not even five year resident of seventy four Village Hill Road in Northampton. And I want to talk about historic Northampton. For me, historic Northampton embodies the most incredible example of teaching the complexity of American history. While some areas of our country attempt to eliminate these complexities, Betty, Lori, their board and their volunteers to continue to deepen our knowledge of our indigenous roots, years of slavery and struggles for evolution and growth. A few weeks ago, I was listening to Lori and Betty talk with their remarkable and endless enthusiasm about what can be learned and taught to generations of children about the natural history of our land and community through the scholarly research of the 400 year old Parsons House and continued study of the Shepherd House and Barn. I hope you will fully support this proposal. It could not be in better professional hands. Thank you. Huh. Thank you, Jana. Uh, Kathy. Thank you. Um, I'm Kathy Murray. I live at 50 Laurel Park in Northampton. Um, I am a member of the Northampton Disability Commission, and I'm also a 23 year long staff member at the Montessori School of Northampton, and I'm here to endorse um, the plan for building the inclusive playground at the Ryan Road School. Um, I think it's very exciting that Northampton's considering building an inclusive playground. Um, as the proposal showed, there's not one for 25 miles, a 25 mile radius. And having one here would certainly not only serve the students at Ryan Road School, but would serve children in Northampton and Northampton, Florence, Leeds, and also the surrounding area, and may even bring families to Northampton as a destination. Accessible playgrounds, as we know, benefit the children who play on them by providing opportunities for social interaction, movement, sensory experience, independence, and mastery of the environment. But inclusive environments also make it possible for family members to interact. For example, grandparents who might not feel comfortable on a playground with obstacles walking around with their with their grandchildren, or or family members who happen, you know, to use mobility devices. Mobility, as we know, is a continuum. And even among those who don't always use a mobility device, people can be affected by illness, accidents, or aging. The playground will allow family members to have opportunities to engage with their children in the play area instead of being limited to sitting on a remote bench. Inclusive environments provide a place for children to interact, learn about each other, and internalize the understanding that every human has strengths and challenges and that the challenges don't have to become obstacles. So I, I hope that um, I hope the committee will take, take, take into, into serious consideration the funding for the playground. I think it would be a marvelous addition to the to the playscapes in Northampton. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Steve? Uh, 
Uh, Steve, you need to un unmute yourself. Uh, almost I'm there. Sorry. there we go. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, trying to get my phone to work. I just got off of the highway because I now live in the Berkshires. I live at uh, Morgan Street in Lenox. But I am the veteran service officer for Northampton, and I've been working in Memorial Hall for 20 years now. I'm also a veteran who returned home from the service, and I just wanted to take this moment to let people know how important it would be to both the veteran community and in the city as a whole to try to support the improvements that we need to do to our building. That was built by the Grand Army of the Republic and it, it's it been around a long time. It, it hasn't had the upkeep it probably should have had, um, but now it needs it. And I just really think that the veterans of Northampton need to know that they're gonna be remembered and Memorial Hall is what that is to them. Um, right from the monument that's out front to the bronze plaques that exist inside the building. It's all those people who sacrificed for the country and the military. Um, and it's to be remembered. So I'm, I'm urging everyone to support the funding of the re, the repairs that need to happen at in, in Memorial Hall in the city. So thank you very much. Thanks, Steve, and drive carefully in the Berkshires. It's yeah. horribly yucky out there. And, th and thank you for pulling over while you talk. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, I'm reading Quaverly. Hello. Good evening, everyone. I am the Ward 3 City Councilor, and I'm here in support of Historic Northampton, which we are so privileged to have in Ward 3. And I noticed that there are people who come to Historic Northampton from all over the city. And in this day and age, where a lot of us are, a lot of us are no longer doing things like going to churches and some shared community spaces, Historic Northampton really kind of fills that, that modern function for us. It's really a place of great gathering and everything they've been doing, I feel is, is very beneficial to our community and really helps to build a strong sense of community in Northampton. So I appreciate that you have supported them in the past. And I just wanted to, on behalf of Board 3, say that we hope you will continue to support them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jacob. Hi, everyone. Um, uh, I support everything here. Uh, <laughs> but specifically, I, it, it feels like I'm, I, I don't want to say I'm arguing against something. There's a bunch of noble causes here. in. I, I would just like to say it's a shame that, you know, there's limited resources for these things. But I would ask people to think about different ways that their their preferred projects can be supported. And I, I am in support of the Ryan Road Accessible Playground uh, because I'm not sure that there are many ways that that project can be supported. And it is so, so important for our community. I am speaking as a father of a child who uses a wheelchair. Uh, and we have benefited greatly from accessible playgrounds um, in communities before we recently moved to Northampton. Um, and there, frankly, is a dearth of accessible options for him uh, in Western Massachusetts. And I think that Northampton uh, is generally a leader in very important and socially, uh, um, I would say, elevated causes. Uh, and we are a, a place that other communities look to for leadership. And frankly, the lack of accessible resources, the lack of um, places that are available for someone who happens to use a wheelchair is not really, does not match our character. Um, and so I would urge you all to support this project, um, knowing that it is not just um, something that will benefit kids with disabilities, but everyone in our community. 
Um, and um, as someone else mentioned previously, it's also often a, it serves as a destination. Um, people come from miles around uh, and the side benefits of that are, are, are uh, support for our economy and our local businesses. Um, and that's an, another important aspect of this as well. Um, and uh, I hope you uh, consider it. Thanks very much. Thank you, Jacob. Sarah? Um, hi, I am speak. I have a letter to share um, from someone from the Disability Commission um, from the city who was not able to join us tonight, um, but did write a letter of support that wanted um, to be shared. Um, this is a letter in support of the project, A Playground for All at Ryan Road, um, to receive financial backing from the Community Preservation Act Fund. For too long, people with disabilities have been left out of everyday life. All children should be able to play, and a playground is not only a quintessential place to play as a child, but occupies an outsized role in children's lives. It is often a hub and a gathering spot during the school day, as well as outside of school hours for families. If Northampton is able to provide a playground that allows all children to play with and alongside one another, regardless of ability, then we should do so. I and we, and we the Disability Commission, heartily support this endeavor. <laughs> Um, sincerely, Amy Sugahara. Hope I said her na last name correctly. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And a reminder to all the folks out there, if you um, are not speaking tonight or know someone who is not speaking tonight and would like to submit a written comment the way that someone did and Sarah read their comment, um, please do that. They can be submitted to Sarah LaValle. They'll be posted on the city website. They'll be available for all of us to read as well as all of you to read. So feel free to do that or recommend that that be done. Uh, Katie. Hi, um, I am a parent of uh, uh, my son, Jamie, is a student in Northampton Public Schools. Um, I wanted to speak um, in support of the, um, the playground for all as well. Um, I, I wanna echo some of the themes that Jacob mentioned. Um, the biggest thing being just um, the current, um, the fact that I think this is currently a huge gap in the landscape. It's uh, It's been surprising to our family since moving here that something like this is not available. Um, my son is multiply disabled, um, physically, um, intellectually, um, visually impaired. And, you know, the, the playgrounds that are available are not sufficient to his needs and, and to allow him to access um, the, you know, the same experiences that other children in the community do. Um, this would mean so much to him and to us as a family. Um, you know, right now we're having to travel an hour, 45 minutes to get to any kind of structure that he can access in any way. Um, and I think, um, as Jacob said, I think that, that um, those spaces when we do travel to them are really remarkable in the way that they allow children of all different abilities to inter interact um, on an even playing field. Um, and I think that that is something that is, is meaningful to, to children on all parts of that spectrum. Um, I, I think um, every child deserves to have access to, to play and to feel part of a community and to be able to interact with peers on that level. Um, and I just wanna express my support for that project. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Trudy? Uh, Trudy, and un unmute yourself. There we go. Hi. Um, my... Can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Um, Trudy will... Thank you. I'm Trudy Williams. I live in Leeds, and I really appreciate it this chance to comment. And uh, first, I, I want to attest to something Quaverly said, because I have experienced directly how much what historic Northampton 
offers has allowed me to feel really a part of the community. And it's physical. And I'm thinking tonight, because we're talking about an architectural um, request, you know, to support the project that is spatial and physical and material, that um, it fits with every what feels like a transformational thing from feeling like intellectually a part of things to actually a part of something when you pull the ropes that raises, you know, that helps go up when you walk into an exhibition and can encounter an archive and and what that feels or as a researcher, if I go in and look at something at the archives. But I just want to say that, um, and also uh, building on something that Janet Nelson said about the evident the evidence of the care and teaching the complexity of history, this particular project being architectural, I think is really important because I do think uh, in my developmental background, well, as a person, but as a developmental psychologist that we really do live by more than what is just intellectual. That's completely vital and it's an incredible path for sharing things. But we also have to live by what's sensory, you know, what we see, what we feel, the ground beneath our feet, our landscape outside, the natural one, and also the interior one. And I think restoring these places will give such an um, incredible way for us to embrace more the meaning of understanding lives, uh, what lives were like as the past and how it resonates with us and, and makes us look into the meaning of how we live our lives now, physically, here. And um, I just think it's a dimension that often gets overlooked about how important it is. I mean, in a way, that seems silly to say, because, of course, we have these wonderful things, these buildings and stuff like that. But um, the way they approach this project is so much more than just give us money to make the structure sound, although that is critical. So, um, and also, I just want to end by saying that in the past couple of years, my mind is always something Bell Hooks said, which is that the local fully imagined is universal. And I feel like a project like this goes deeply into the, allows visitors uh, and participants like me, you know, because I look forward to wherever I can help or something like that, uh, that it really does help you fully experience it, which to me, when something's fully imagined, it involves all our senses, not, you know, the intellectual knowledge and also the physical experiential of what you feel, what you see, what you hear, and everything. So um, I think the project's wonderful, and I hope it gets all the support it needs. <laughs> and thanks. Thank you, Trudy. And a reminder to folks, when you begin, if you could just share with us um, your name and your address as well. That would be helpful. Uh, Joanne. Hi, Joanne Campbell, uh, 13 Perkins Avenue, and I'm here to speak in support of Valley Community Development's Crafts Avenue project. Um, I won't speak to Valley's expertise. I think many of you already know that Valley certainly has the capacity to uh, complete this project and create some more affordable housing downtown. Um, what I'm really excited about as some more single person housing is um, that there's a great need for this housing. Um, and also, um, I'm also pretty pleased with that uh, 20 of the 30 units are going to be for folks at 30% or less of median income. As Valley could attest, my information is not current, is that usually for any affordable housing development, um, whether it's family housing or single person housing, that the large majority of folks who apply for the housing are at the very low ends of the income. And so therefore, this is going to be a great resource for folks who are at the 30% or less of median income. The other thing I want to say, since, you know, I obviously I worked at Valley for many, many years and live in town. And so I think just from a personal perspective that over the years, knowing you know, some of the tenants, of course, I didn't know all the tenants, but now that I've been retired for several years, you know, I see people in the grocery store, people who have worked in the stores, people who had volunteered at Valley. And it it just it really gives, you know, a sense of that many of the folks that um, 
you know, remain unhoused or have then be have been housed or people who are low income working in the lower end of the uh, retail market, um, that they are part of our community and their day to day lives are enriched by having, you know, sustainable housing that they can afford so they can live in town, participate in the activities. I would see people at different activities around town. Many of the uh, cultural activities in town provide uh, tickets, oftentimes for free to folks who are low income. So it just it's just very satisfying to see that uh, we can embrace people of all income levels uh, in town and I hope you will support Valley's project. Thank you. And uh, Brian, Samantha, let me know that she she's not able to raise her hand, but she would like to speak. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you, Joanne. Um, Samantha. Oh. You appeared from over there. You are. <laughs> My name is Samantha Vane. I live in 76 Bliss Street in Florence. Uh, I am a Ryan Road parent as well as a um, occupational therapist. I treat pediatrics and I also run the local wheelchair clinic through the Mass General Brigham System at Cooley Dickinson Hospital. Um, I am throwing my support towards the Ryan Road playground. Um, I know that we, I had spoken at the last one, but I feel that it's really important to um, just reiterate pretty much everything that Kathy had said. Well done, Kathy. Thank you. I <laughs> agree with everything you said. Um, and I appreciate your words and I appreciate hearing from other families and in the area um, because it is really important to understand that we want to minimize these missed opportunities to help support our families and especially for a playground that we really do need to address in a time sensitive manner. Um, it, we do need to kind of think about how do we minimize the missed opportunities to help our children, to help the families in our community, and to bring more people into our area. Um, and I've noticed over the last few years that they've been really trying to make downtown Florence more accessible and widening the sidewalks and um, smoothing out those transitions from the sidewalk to the street for crosswalks. Um, so I think that continuing to broaden that concept and incorporate Florence's school is also a really important aspect of that as well. So um, please continue to consider the Ryan Road Playground. That would be great. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Samantha. Our Ward 3 counselor again. Thank you. I also want to support uh, the Valley CDC work and just report back that I had a wonderful coffee with the executive director today and I was just very impressed with her competence and of course we all know how important affordable housing is to us as a community vitally important and I also want to support the accessible playground I wanted to let you know that right now at the city council there's a resolution before us to really recommit ourselves and refamiliar familiarize ourselves with uh, past mayor Narkowitz's ADA transition plan and we as a council are really trying to center this idea that as much as we're looking at climate with all of our capital improvements, we should also be looking at accessibility. And I really appreciate all of these heartfelt comments that came from parents tonight, and I really want to lift those up and support them. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Kristen. Um, hi, my name is Kristen Walker and I live at 35 Brookwood Drive in Florence. I am a paraprofessional at Ryan Road School and I use a wheelchair and I just want to show my support for the playground. It is disheartening to, to go out and do recess duty and not be able to go to the playground and be with the children. I usually have to stay up on the blacktop with them. And it would be nice to be able to show them that disabled adults are included in things um, so they can become more familiar with people with different disabilities and everything. I think for the most part, um, the city's doing a great job with disability stuff, but the playground is a real deficit. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. 
Sarah again. Yeah, um, so outside of being um, one of the, the grant applicants for the Rhine Road Playground, um, and as a physical therapist who works in the school district, I am also a parent of a child with special needs. Um, I have a daughter who's nine and she has Down syndrome and she has autism. Um, and I think, I guess I can share my, my feelings also from the parent perspective. Um, we spend a lot of time at playgrounds throughout the city. Um, we've tested them all out. And um, we often end up on the outskirts of a playground because there are not enough um, multi-sensory options for the kind of play that my child um, engages in. And there are often not enough, um, <clears throat> there, aren't, there aren't many options that accommodate children that have lower muscle tone and mobility needs. Um, and so what this ends up doing is separating children that have special needs or that have disabilities from um, where everyone else is playing. And the playground that we have constructed, which we are <clears throat> open to suggestions and, and changing and, and working with families to uh, make sure that this playground reflects multiple needs. Um, <clears throat> this, where we have started, it really meets so many different kinds of needs for so many different kinds of children. Um, and as a PT in our district, in our all of our schools, I also spend a lot of time at recess um, and I am out on the playground every week with lots of students and children who have um, a variety of, of mobility needs, vision needs, auditory needs, um, sensory needs. And it is very difficult to um, support inclusion and engagement with all of our children um, when the environment does not cater to the needs of those within it. Um, so I, I think the idea that, our, that we, are un, we are under an opportunity here to be a playground that needs to come down, um, we have an opportunity to rebuild this playground and really do it the right way um, to set an example within our community and um, to prioritize our children that have different needs um, and special needs and our families that accompany them and adults and caregivers that also have special needs or mobility needs. Um, we have an opportunity to um, prioritize that and make sure that we are including all members um, of our community in opportunities for a recreational play. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Andrea? Good evening. My name is Andrea Egito. <clears throat> Sorry, I just got a little frog in my throat. I live in Florence and I teach kindergarten at Ryan Road Elementary School. And I am um, would like to reiterate all the things that have been spoken in favor of the Ryan Road Playground for All. And as one of the um, co-proposers with with um, Sarah, I would just like to say that unfortunately, this is a project that we can't piecemeal because uh, one, the existing play structure at Ryan Road needs to come down, but also because of the way the rubber footing has to be poured at the same time that the play structure is installed. Um, it's not something that we could say, well, we'll do this one part and then do the footing later, or we'll do the footing first and then the structure part. Um, it has to all happen at the same time. And we understand that this is a large amount of money in a very tight um, funding cycle. Um, but unfortunately, as Sarah said, it is a timely matter and we have the opportunity to do it right. We have the opportunity to make something that will be inclusive for all and to create something that doesn't exist um, in our you know, vicinity in this area. 
and as a way to include all children. And we really hope that the committee can work its magic and do whatever needs to be done to be able to fund phase one of this project. We understand, you know, we did have it in two phases and we understand phase one is a large chunk of money, um, but we really hope that this committee and the city council can find a way to fund this phase one um, in this cycle, and then hopefully be able to continue to expand as we go into the future. But it is timely and it is unfortunate that we can't do it in pieces. It has to all come at the same time. So thank you all for your work and your attention to this. And thank you to everybody who smoked tonight. Have a good night. Thank you, Andrea. Anne? Um, yeah, I'm a resident of Lathrop Community. And now I wanna vote for Ryan Road Playground too after listening to this. But I also wanna talk about our invasive species project, which sounds like um, almost a side effect when you compare it to children on playgrounds. But we all have ideas of what it's like to be in the woods and to see the wildflowers and to walk along certain paths. And the idea that that could be gone, it could be just overtaken by some of these huge, enormous vines, which kill the trees underneath it. It's not an esoteric project. It's, it's a part of what we think of as New England as the woods and they're getting eaten up. And I hope you support our project. Thank you, Anne. I am searching for other hands. Oh, here we go, Jane. Yes, I too um, support the Lathrop Invasives Removal Project. Um, invasives are a major contributor to the decline in pollinators and birds. Um, Lathrop residents have um, been working on this for quite a while and have contributed both money to the project and expect to uh, contribute hands-on donations as well. Um, I feel this is a very important um, project. You know, when I first moved here, it seemed like there were a lot more birds around and we just can't afford to have the diversity um, of our nature disappear. So thank you. Thank you, Jane. Other hands. We have quite a few folks that are still out there but not seeing hands. Uh, here we go, Susan. Uh, Susan, un unmute yourself, we can't hear you. Sorry, you um, right. I'm Susan Garrett. I live at Lathrop Communities also. I have to say all of these projects are so worthy. I, I can imagine you're voting on them, but um, I'd also like to say I, I'm, speaking in behalf of the removal of invasives and in our preserved land and on Lathrop communities. And, um, and just to say that, that, you know, trees and forests are, and soil are extremely important for um, our survival of the climate crisis and also for biodiversity as, as uh, Jane pointed out. <clears throat> so I hope that you vote for that. And, um, you know, I'm one of the people who's willing to you know, put in some work for it. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Ruth? I would like also to, <clears throat> excuse me, speak for the in favor of the Lathrop uh, grant proposal. Um, I know the CPC has to divide its resources among different categories and certainly for the natural environment, the uh, Lathrop proposal to keep working to eliminate invasive plants, um, working as residents, doing our part in so far as we are able, um, but also hiring very, very reputable, very skilled professionals to do the work um, that's way beyond us. It's very important. And it's also important to realize this is not just a little Lathrop project, though we have, what, a hundred and how many acres of land between the Northampton and East Hampton campus. But on the Northampton campus, 
our trails abut and really are part of the whole way through the whole um, uh, Fitzgerald Lake Conservation Area. So as well, and our our land, uh, our land where our houses are abuts it. So the more we can do to get rid of invasive plants, the more we help the larger environment because obviously the, the birds and the bees and the wind <laughs> carry the seeds um, and the pollen from our from our nasty plants <laughs> into the into the conservation area. So I hope we can, it's not a big grant, I hope we can secure it. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, Jacob? Hi, this is Jacob's wife, Jennifer. Um, I was not planning to speak, but uh, my family and I are sitting at dinner watching this conversation unfold. And my 14 year old was almost going to speak and decided not to. So I decided to speak um, on his behalf. He's at JFK Middle School here and uses a wheelchair as Jacob mentioned earlier. Um, I also wanted to appeal to your sense, uh, in addition to the need for obviously having inclusivity in our community, just your Massachusetts pride as a family that moved here from California three years ago. It is sort of remarkable to me how California is very supportive of families raising children with disabilities and just having accessible spaces in general. Um, Massachusetts is remarkably not, not as bad as other states are, but but that we could be a lot more supportive of families with kids with disabilities, I think. Um, unless you have uh, been there and, and are familiar with disability, you don't quite realize how different it is. And I think that, you know, it comes down to a very granular level, which is on the playground at school, you, you see all your peers over there and you physically can't join them or you, you, can't, you can't be with them for all sorts of reasons. And I think if there's very something so very simple we could do in rebuilding a playground, which has to be done anyway, um, and make it usable by all, that seems like a no brainer. Um, I know there's a lot of worthwhile projects, but on behalf of the kids, the kids for the next you know hundred years who are going to use that playground, it would really make a big difference in this community. So thank you. Thank you. And if your 14 year old changes their mind, there's still time to raise their hand. Uh, Patrick. Hello, this is Patrick Arguin, CEO of Lathrop Community, representing 100 Bassett Brook Drive, East Hampton, Mass. Thank you for considering our proposal regarding invasive species. Uh, the Lathrop Community and our board of directors are in full support of the submitted community preservation project. The residents of Lathrop community are very active and enthusiastic about preparing and preserving our land. Uh, they give so much of their time, their energy. We appreciate your final financial support and your collaboration of the Kestrel Board and Land Trust. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, Jeremy. Hi, thank you. <clears throat> My name is Jeremy Dubbs. I am... Um, Ward for city councilor. Um, I uh, be I became city councilor in January, and um, before that, I was um, the chair of the disability commission since 2019. Um, and I'm here to speak in support of the Ryan Rhodes Elementary School accessible playground for all. Um, I think it would be an incredible, life changing thing for for a ch for a person growing up. Um, I could save. From experience as a wheelchair user, um, I'm 46 years old. Um, I've been a wheelchair user since I was five years old. Uh, so over 40 years, I've been using a wheelchair. And uh, back when I was growing up, there was, you know, there was there was no, there was not an inc inclusive playground at the school that I went to. And I can, I can tell you right now um, that uh, my childhood would would have been a lot better um, had I had a more inclusive playground where I could feel uh, you know, more included with my fellow students. And um, so speaking as both a city councilor, um, an, acti an activist for disability rights, and also you know, just as someone who's a wheelchair user, I would be in strong support of making the Ryan Roads uh, uh, playground accessible for all. Um, and also I just wanted to mention that um, tomorrow at the city council meeting, we will be vo voting on a resolution in support of the ADA transition plan in Northampton, which is um, basically an outline of recommendations on how to make Northampton 
more accessible and welcoming to all disabled people. So I think that um, this uh, uh, project to make Ryan Rhodes Elementary School playground accessible for all, I think it would be just amazing and perfect timing with the, um, you know, the support that we're trying to, to um, raise awareness for, for, AD, for ADA law and disability rights in Northampton. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jeremy. Are there hands out there, the folks wanting to speak? Anybody else? Much of. I would like to speak, but I don't know how to make raise my hand. That's no, okay. Why uh, go ahead and speak now, Anne? My name is Ann Wood, and I live in the north campus of Lathrop Community. And I just wanted to support our uh, proposal for the uh, to for, before the council. Um, I was I've been living here for three years now, and I've been very impressed with their past with the past work of the um, land conservation committee, and um, I. I would really just want to support what everybody else has said, and I expect that I will be involved in carrying forward with whatever they do in the future. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Ann. Alexis. Um, hi, I'm Alexis Breitnecker, and I'm the executive director of Valley Community Development. And I just wanted to thank the committee for considering our request and say that I obviously fully support our request. I believe we're one of the only affordable housing um, developers. And I also believe that Sarah LaValle, you had a several uh, folks write to you in support, um, just so you know that we have we have a few other supporters that may were not able to make it onto the Zoom call tonight. So thank you so much. Thank you, Alexis. Um, I would love to talk, and I can't figure out how to raise my hand also. Okay, Rachel, you're up. Hi. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm just hopping on because I'm coming off of a, a Northampton Public Schools CPAC meeting. So that's the Special Education Parent Advisory Council. Um, so just speaking as a CPAC officer and a parent of a child um, with a visual impairment, um, we would love to see a more accessible, inclusive playground here in Northampton. We drive as far as Belchertown or now there's one in Holyoke, the Miracle League playground. Um, and so it would be really, really special to have something right here in our community. And, and I'm also even hoping that we start looking towards other schools like Leeds Elementary School in the future and, and working to make all the playgrounds more inclusive. But starting with one, at least in the community, um, would be really wonderful and great for all kids, not just kids with disabilities. So thank you for all this work, everyone that you're doing. Thank you, Rachel. Other folks? If you can't figure out how to raise your hand, speak out like Rachel just did. Uh, Sarah, do you see anybody out there? Uh, I do not. Okay, one more time. Anybody who has not spoken now is your chance. Yes, yes, no. Okay, so we're ending our public comment uh, section. Uh, thank all of you who spoke tonight and all of you who uh, did not and just listened in. It's always so heartening for me as a committee member to hear how eloquent and passionate and informed and uh, wonderful residents are in, in speaking to proposals that they care deeply about and encouraging us as committee members to do uh, our best in hearing what you have to say and making those decisions and passing them on to our city councilors, a few of who were here uh, tonight. Um, generally speaking, we do not begin funding recommendations it's it's often challenging for us as a committee members to remember what we did two weeks ago. So if we begin deliberations and then put those off um, until the next uh, next two weeks, uh, it's not a always an efficient use of our time. Um, so with committee members 
uh, uh, support, I think we're going to put off our funding recommendations until our next meeting, which is two weeks from tonight, uh, April the 17th, Wednesday night at seven o'clock on Zoom, where we will begin and maybe, hopefully, possibly end deliberations uh, for this round. Again, to reiterate, we have uh, uh, $3.6 million in proposals that have been presented to us. We have about three quarters of a million dollars, 775,000 available to us. We have the ability to uh, bond, particularly for the Memorial Hall project, uh, which essentially bonding is a fancy word for borrowing money. Uh, and Sarah will present more information about that at our next meeting. Uh, we encourage all of you listening tonight to, to attend by Zoom uh, uh, two weeks from now uh, and listen to the committee's deliberations. And those will be, again, challenging for us given the uh, amount of proposals and the, and the amount of money that we have available um, to us. Uh, so again, nine proposals, $3.6 million, and we will do the best that we can in uh, two weeks Two weeks from now. I'm not hearing object or seeing objections, I don't think, from committee members about delaying our deliberations until two weeks from now. Is that, does anyone disagree with that? Looks like everyone's, everybody's good with that. Uh, before we leave, before the meeting is over, um, Sarah, is there anything else that you need? Oh, Chris, got your hand up. Chris Hellman. I was going to let you wrap up your comments, and then I had a couple of questions. <clears throat> Um, I wanted to ask Sarah um, going into our our um, deliberations round. So, well, I was just um, great minds think alike, Chris. Or, but fools seldom differ. <laughs> one mind, one mind thinks. Um, I was going to ask Sarah if she had anything to she needed to say or could help us. Um, and if not, Chris, you can guide Sarah with a couple of your questions. Sarah, anything we need to know? Yeah, and I would just let everyone know that I do have bonding scenarios uh, for the Memorial Hall project, a couple different ones for consideration. Um, the playground project would be bonding eligible, but only for up to a maximum term of five years due to the, the shorter life of the playground equipment and the surface. Um, and I'll also have a spreadsheet with calculations as to how potential bonding scenarios would reduce the available funding and uh, future funding rounds. So you will send those out to us before the next meeting, Sarah? Yes, I will do that. Okay. And for the Memorial Hall, at least there'll be different time scenarios for that. Is that right? Five, seven, ten years? Is that what? Something like that? Uh, five and ten. Five and ten. Uh, Chris, questions for Sarah? Nope. She's she's got all the bases covered, as is so often the case. Um, I have to say that that is surprising and wonderful news regarding the possibility of bonding um, Ryan Road. Um because last week when we talked about it, you were you were not optimistic. So even even a five year window, I think, gives us some flexibility that I didn't expect to to have. So that's really good to hear. Any other questions from committee members for Sarah or comments from committee members? Um, any other business not foreseen when the agenda was published? I would encourage all of us and all of folks tuning in to get out to some place. I think it's like one to four on Monday for the uh, Eclipse action. Uh, I know Lilly Library is sponsoring an Eclipse party on the lawns of Lilly Library, and they'll be giving you those little glasses that you can look at the sun, uh, not to do what our ex-president did, which is stare at the sun directly, not a good thing. Um, but to look at the eclipse through those through those uh, special glasses. Um, we will entertain a motion to adjourn before reconvening two weeks from now on April the 17th. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. A second? Julia with a second. Thank you all. Uh, thank you all for listening in, and we will see you in two weeks. Drive carefully if you're having to drive tonight.